हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू अनदर सीरीज ऑफ माइंड मैप इन टुडेज एपिसोड वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट एनवायरनमेंट एंड इकोलॉजी एंड द टॉपिक इज एनवायरमेंटल इम्पैक्ट असेसमेंट अंडर दिस टॉपिक वी विल अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट इज ईआईए दैट इज एनवायरमेंटल इम्पैक्ट असेसमेंट इवोल्यूशन ऑफ ई द ई प्रोसेस एंड इट्स कॉम्पोनेंट्स वॉट इज ई आई ए नोटिफिकेशन टू थाउजेंड सिक्स एग्जाम्शन अंडर रिसेंट अमेंडमेंट ड्रॉबैक्स इन ई आई ए इन इंडिया एंड वे फॉरवर्ड फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट्स डिस्कस वॉट इज ई आई ए इट इज द स्टडी टू प्रिडिक्ट द इफेक्ट ऑफ अ प्रपोज एक्टिविटी और प्रोजेक्ट ऑन द एनवायरमेंट ई आई ए कंपेयर्स वेरियस ऑल्टरनेटिव फॉर अ प्रोजेक्ट इट सीक्स टू आइडेंटिफाई द वन विच रिप्रेजेंट्स द बेस्ट कॉम्बिनेशन of economic and environmental cost and benefits now moving on to evolution of eia eia is one of the successful policy innovations of the 20th century for environmental conservation 37 years ago there was no eia but today it is a formal process in many countries EIA as a mandatory regulatory procedure originated with the implementation of the National Environment Policy Act or NEPA 1969 in the US In 1989 the World Bank adopted EIA for major development projects in which a borrower country had to undertake an EIA under the bank's supervision The Indian experience with environmental impact assessment began over 20 years back. Till 1994, environmental clearance from the central government was an administrative decision and lacked legislative support. On 27 January 1994, the MOEF under the EPA 1986 promulgated an EIA notification making environmental clearance that is EC mandatory. Certain activities permissible under the Coastal Regulation Zone Act 1991 also require similar clearance. Now let's discuss about the EIA process and its components. The environment impact assessment consists of following steps: screening, which determines whether the proposed project requires an EIA, and if it does, then the level of assessment required scoping identifies the key issues and impacts that should be further investigated baseline data describes the existing environmental status of the identified study area impact analysis identifies and predicts the likely environmental and social impact of the proposed project and evaluates the significance assessment of alternatives delineation of mitigation measures and environmental impact assessment report public hearing law requires that the public must be informed and consulted on a proposed development after the completion of eia report decision making it decides whether the project is rejected approved or needs further change post monitoring it checks to ensure that the impacts of the project do not exceed the legal standards and implementation of the mitigation measures are in the manner as described in the eia report depending on nature location and scale of the project eia report should contain all or some of the following components air environment noise environment water environment biological land socio economic and health environment risk assessment and environment management plan now let's understand what is eia notification 2006 decentralization of project clearances it classified the developmental projects in two categories category a national level appraisal projects are appraised by impact assessment agency or iaa and the expert appraisal committee that is eac and category b that is state level appraisal state level environment impact assessment authority or seiaa and state level expert appraisal committee or seac provide clearance introduction of different stages the amendment introduced four stages into the eia cycle screening scoping public hearing and appraisal and projects with mandatory clearance 
projects such as mining, thermal power plants, river valley, infrastructure and industries. Now moving on to exemptions under recent amendments. The MOEFCC has notified amendment to the Environment Impact Assessment Rules, exempting highway projects of strategic and defense importance which are 100 km from the line of control. Biomass based power plants, thermal power plants up to 15 MW based on biomass or non-hazardous municipal solid waste. Fish handling ports and harbors with less pollution potential compared to others and caters to small fishermen. Toll plazas that need more width for installation of toll collection booths to cater to a large number of vehicles. Now let's discuss about the drawbacks in EIA in India. Lack of awareness among the local people about the EIA process, their own rights and responsibilities. Unavailability of EIA in local languages which helps in misleading the people. Ignorance and corruption among the officials involved in the EIA committee. Loopholes. Big MNCs circumvent EIA process by exploiting exemption provisions and loopholes in the law. There is a lack of clarity in overall conductance of the screening and scoping processes. Lack of professionals. Lack of availability of quality EIA professionals which lead to errors and omissions in the assessment. Now lastly, let's discuss about the way forward. There should be independent EIA authority. Public hearing should be applicable to all category projects. The focus of EIA needs to shift from utilization and exploration to conservation of natural resources. Thus, EIA is critical for environmental decision-making process in India. To achieve the SDGs, our policy decisions should be based on scientific analytical assessments, keeping a synergy between people and the planet. Now it's time for the practice questions. First of all, note down the prelims question. Environment impact assessment rules in India are notified by which of the following ministry? Ministry of Tribal Affairs, Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, Ministry of Mines or Ministry of Development of North Eastern Region. And now mains question. This question has been asked in UPSC 2014. Question is, environmental impact assessment studies are increasingly undertaken before a project is cleared by the government. Discuss the environmental impacts of coal-fired thermal plants located at coal pit heads. So that's all for today. Stay tuned for the next episode. Thanks for watching.